بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته برادرين سيسترز بلكم باك تو الإسلام برودكشن دون سجين I think it was on Sunday night as far as I can recall where Molana Osman Saab he released a video in which he explained to you the issue of uh, the two feet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the Salafiyah and then he uh, give you the statements of Sheikh Albani which necessitated that the Aqeedah of the Salafiyah could possibly be from the Jews and the Christians and in this video inshallah I want to give you something similar from where you will realize that most definitely there is a resemblance between the Aqeedah of the, uh, the Salafiyah and the Christians and the Salafiyah cannot defend themselves against uh, the Christians and they have no answer for one or two of the arguments which the Christians present, uh, present for themselves and I'm going to explain that to you in this video inshallah ta'ala see the Salafiyah believe everything as literal so we take the eyes as literal we take the feet as literal we take the sitting on the throne or the establishment of the upon the throne we take that as literal we take the fingers as literal and we take the the uh, the, uh, the shin as literal and the coming and the going and etc all this of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to such an extent even the clothes of Allah astaghfirullah as literal okay so we have one specific hadith and in this one specific hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says yanzilu rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala every single night allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last portion of the night he descends rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uses the word yanzil now yanzil means he descends he comes down salafiya take this as literal that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he descends he literally descends now what is descending descending is moving one, one from, from one place to another place this is what al intiqal this is what you know uh yanzil this is what descending means you go from one place to another place so that means allah comes from one place astaghfirullah according to them which is the arsh and he comes into the dunya and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he makes an announcement and according to the ashaira is different but these people, these brothers, they take it literal. So Allah has come from his arsh, he has come into the dunya. Now, the dunya, this is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This would necessitate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come inside his creation. Now listen to this brothers very, very carefully. This would necessitate that if we take this literally, according to the aqidah of the Salafiya, which is, this would mean Allah has come inside his creation, which is called in terminology, Hulul. Allahu Akbar. He is dwelling inside his creation for that short period of time. Now, when you have the Christians approaching the Salafiya, the Salafiya have no answer for this. Because their aqidah necessitates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can come in the creation. So then they add on the, uh, upon this that if Allah can come into the creation, then why can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God according to them, why can God not come into the body of Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam? Which is their belief that Allah has come, God has come into Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. What would the Salafiyah say? How would the Salafiyah reply? Because you believe that he can come in the creation and according to some Salafiyah, all Salafiyah may not believe this, but some definitely, a lot of Salafiyah believe that he is literally sitting upon his arsh. And in my previous videos from Ibn Qayyim and Ibn Taymiyyah, I have given these references now, okay, you may have some Salafi who say, we don't believe he's sitting, we believe he's established. But like I said, it both uh, necessitates a jism, it both necessitates uh, a, a body for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So 
when you have Christians saying to Salafia that if you believe Allah can descend into his creation, he can come into the skies, he can come into the land, according to some Salafia, then why can't God come into the body of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, astaghfirullah, and live in there? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So see, taking these texts, literally, can you see what they necessitated? Can you see the harm and what they lead to? Allahu Akbar. Now, I just want to show you a video where actually some, uh, a Christian has taken up our brother Shamsi and has actually mentioned this. And you can see Shamsi stumbling. And it's happened to another brother also in the uh, speaker's corner. And I don't really want to bring that brother into it. But this has occurred a few times in the speaker's corner. And the Salafia have stumbled and they haven't had an answer for this. So you can see that there is a major resemblance between both. It's a different fact whether they actually accept it that, you know, yes, we believe this and this is what it necessitates, but we don't care. That's a different thing altogether. But somebody who looks at it with an impartial nazar uh, and, you know, from a, an impartial angle, then he will come to the conclusion that definitely there is a major resemblance between both of them. So, brothers, you know, these are aqaid which are very dangerous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to refrain from them. And like I said, if you actually look at our aqidah, what is it? See, these texts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in them whatever Allah meant by them. We are not going to go out of our way to ascertain a meaning for them. We're not going to deny them. Rather, whatever Allah meant, that is what we believe. And whatever Allah meant, we leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't get safer. It's so safe to just stay by. But anyway, have a look at this video where you can see this Christian and he's clearly saying to Shamsi that in the Quran, in the Quran, it says Allah comes into his creation. What is he talking about? This is what he's referring to. He's referring to Allah being upon his throne. This would necessitate Allah coming into his creation. Or he's referring to the hadith where uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every night that every night he descends. He's referring to this, that these necessitate hulul dwelling in the creation. So just have a listen to this video. Just a there space? He said, there's no space whatsoever, yes? Space no, no. Time is okay, yes. no problem. So we could create the creation outside outside him. Is he still outside space and the creation? Right, and I'm just asking you, we could create the creation. Did he create it outside him or did he create the creation inside him? Creation comes from God, but it was created from God. I, yes. know, I know it's from, I know it's from, I understand, but was it outside his, when God out of here? Out of nothing, all No, brother, 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 listen carefully. When you make a car, do you make a car inside yourself or the car is outside you? This is irrelevant. It is because if God was outside the creation right. and you said to me when there was no creation, there was no space and there's no space, yeah? So I'm saying to you, the way that before Allah created the creation, He still he is the web of His majesty. When He created the creation, He's not part of it, He's not inside of it. But he is Never. according to the Quran because you said He's He is upon His throne and His throne is no created. No problem, listen carefully.